For this video, we're going to focus on learning some of the foundational calculations used in statistics. Here are some of the foundational calculations we'll be using. n, sum of x, x minus the mean, x minus the mean which is then squared, ss, the mean, and s standing for standard deviation. To get started, we need to define a variable and have some data. We're going to call our variable x, and that's going to stand for hours of sleep. The raw scores for x are 10 hours, 10 hours, 9 hours, 8 hours, 8 hours, 7 hours, 6 hours, and 6 hours. Now that we have some data, we can start to move through discussing the different calculations. We'll start with a discussion of n. n stands for the sample size. That means how many pieces of raw data we have. If we count our data, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven, eight different scores for x, or eight different hours of sleep that were reported. So because we have eight pieces of data, our sample size equals eight, and thus n equals eight. Now let's move on to finding the sum of x. Sigma, or the sum symbol, stands for add all cases. So this is telling us to find all cases of x and add them up. As we just noted, we have eight cases. That's each of the individual raw scores. So this is simply telling us to add all the raw scores together and get the total. When I do that, I get sum of x equals 64. Next, we're going to learn how to find x bar, or the mean. The formula is x bar equals the sum of x over n. So what this is telling us is that in order to find the mean, we need to add all the raw scores, we did that and got 64, and we need to divide it by the sample size, which we found was 8. If we divide 64 by 8, we get that the mean equals 8. We are now ready to move on to calculating the deviation. The formula for that is x minus x bar. Deviation refers to how far an individual raw score is from the mean. So every raw score has its own deviation. So let's find the deviation for each of our raw scores. We need to subtract the mean score one at a time. So for our first one, we're going to get 10 minus our mean of 8. The second one is going to be 10 minus our mean of 8. And we'll carry that all the way down. So my deviation for the first score is 2 because the raw score is 2 units above the mean. The same is true for the second raw score. The deviation for the third raw score is 1. For the fourth raw score is a 0. For the fifth raw score is a 0. For the sixth raw score is a negative 1. For the seventh raw score, a negative 2. And for the last raw score, the deviation is negative 2. Let's pause here to look at the deviations from the mean, because they actually show us something very interesting about the way the mean functions. The mean is the measure of central tendency, wherein the sum of deviations will always equal zero for the sample. That means any time we find a mean and then find each deviation, if we add those deviations together, the result will always be zero. That's because of the special property the mean has of balancing the deviations above it against the deviations below it. If you take a look at our deviations, 2, 2, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 2, if we add them all up, we do get that the sum of deviations is equal to 0. We don't have any summary numbers to put over on the left for the deviation because each raw score has its own deviation. Instead, we're going to move on to the next calculation, which is the squared deviation. The formula says take each raw score, subtract the sample mean, and then square that result. So we need to find each deviation, which we did just a moment ago. We found each x minus x bar. And now we simply need to square each of those to get the deviation squared. Notice that when I square each deviation, I'm going to get a positive result, because even a negative deviation, when squared, becomes a positive number. So our squared deviations in order are 4, 4, 1, 0, 0, 1, 4, and 4. Part of the reason we might use squared deviations is because we want to deal with that canceling out property of the mean.
We can't use the sum of deviations for much because we'd always end up with zero. We only use it to assess that our mean seems to be properly computed. But if we want to do anything else with deviations, we tend to use the deviation squared. And with that in mind, we're ready to move on to the next calculation, the SS. SS is shorthand for sum of squared deviations from the mean. The translation of SS is actually naming the steps of the SS formula. The formula when read is the summation of parentheses x minus x bar and parentheses exponent 2. So what this is telling us to do in order is first, find the mean. Second, subtract the mean from each raw score to find each deviation. Third, square each deviation to get the deviation squared. And finally, add the squared deviations. We've actually already done all but the final step. So the only thing that's left for us to do is to add the deviations squared. The SS for these data equals 18. So we started by finding the sample size. We then found the sum of x's, and we used those two together to find the mean, or x bar. Once we had the mean, we were able to find the individual deviations and then the deviation squared for each raw score. And we put all those together to get the sum of squared deviations from the mean, which is referred to as SS. Before we move forward to learn about S, we're going to talk about how to summarize what we've already found and we'll do another practice to make sure the concepts are clear. Once we've found anything in statistics, the last step we have to complete is disseminating or summarizing the information into sentences to share with others what we have found. We could use sentences to tell about the sample size or the mean. These are commonly reported. So for examples, we could say, data were collected from a small sample. Anytime we give a summary statement, we must provide the statistic. We typically do this by putting it in parentheses in symbol and numeric form. So I could end my sentence with parentheses n equals 8 to show that when I say small, referring to my sample, I specifically mean 8 people. I could go on to say the mean number of hours slept was 8.00. Now notice here I didn't have to put m or x bar equals because I'm giving the mean is a word in the sentence and then I'm reporting the number that goes with that word in the sentence. But notice that I used 8.00 here, but when I gave the sample size I only said 8. That's because your sample can't exist in portions of a whole. You can't have 8.5 or 7.75 people. You either have a person or you don't have a person. But the hours of sleep could have had a mean of 7.5 or 7.75 or 8.25. So whenever a number could be something other than a whole number, it's rounded to two decimal places in statistics. Now it's your turn to try it out. We're going to use X to stand for hours of sleep, but this time I'm going to specify that those are hours of sleep the night before a job interview, just to differentiate our two data sets. Your raw scores are 8, 8, 7, 6, 6, 5, 4, and 4. Start by finding the sample size, then the sum of X, use those together to find the mean. Once you have those, find each deviation, then each deviation squared, and finally, find that sum of squared deviations. Let's review the answers. We had eight pieces of data, so n equals eight. When we add all those raw scores up, I get a sum of x equal to 48. When I calculate the mean, I get 48 divided by eight equals six. If I was writing that as my final answer, I'd round it to two decimal places and put 6.00. I then can subtract the mean from each raw score to find each deviation. And the deviations I have are 2, 2, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 2. If I want, I can double check those. The sum of the deviations, or the x minus x bars, should equal 0, and I find that they do. Next, we can move on to finding the squared deviations. My squared deviations in order are 4, 4, 1, 0, 0, 1, 4, and 4. Finally, I can find the deviation squared. Because we already found each deviation and already squared it, all I need to do is sum them up. And when I do so, I get an SS equal to 18. For extra practice, you can pause here and try creating two summary sentences similar to the ones I showed you earlier for the sample size and the mean.
Now let's go back to the original data for hours of sleep that we calculated with FIRST. We are ready to move on to finding the standard deviation. S is the symbol used to stand for standard deviation. The formula for the standard deviation says to find the sum of x minus x bars which have been squared. Divide that by n minus 1 and square root the result. We can simplify this by saying s equals the square root of ss over n minus 1, because the top part of our um, fraction says sum of x minus x bar which has been squared, which is the same thing as ss. So let's fill in our formula with the ss, which was 18, and the sample size, which was 8. So now I have s equals the square root of 18 divided by 7. I'm going to round my answer to the millionths place, so I get s equals the square root of 2.571429. I get a long answer of s equals 1.603567 and it continues, but we round to the hundredths place when we have a final calculated answer. So my final s when rounded is equal to 1.60. That's it for this short video. If you'd like to do some more practices, I provided four data sets for you here. Data set A has scores of 10, 8, 6, and 4. B has scores of 20, 10, 5, and 5. C has scores of 6.5, 7.5, 8.0, 9.0, 9.0, 9 and 8.0. And sample D has scores of 105, 111, 98, 72, 102, and 68. Feel free to try all the calculations with these data sets and check them with a classmate or friend.